Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today I would like to show you how I install wraps and blazer veins uh, for my hunting and 3D arrows. Everybody does it a little bit differently, everybody likes a different bit of offset or helical, but I like to show you the way I do it and it's worked really well for me and I've been able to harvest plenty of animals with it and score some pretty high numbers. So I hope you can uh, enjoy it and learn something from it. I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer and we can go ahead and get started. I like white wraps. I like them to be a little bit longer, but I have a whole bunch of these four inch boning wraps. They look pretty nice, so I'm gonna use them. You can get away with using like a magazine or maybe a thin paperback book, but I like personally a mouse pad, and this is what you use when you lay down the wrap and you go to roll the shaft over it. You want something that has some give to it. Fashion jig of some kind, I use a Bitson burger, I use Q-tips, I use boning fletch type platinum, and you want some dry paper towels on hand. Now you can use any shaft you want, of course. I'm using carbon arrows. These are gold tip expedition hunters. First thing you want to do, and I've already done this off camera, is you want to take acetone or isoprop isopropyl alcohol of a pretty high concentrate or um, uh, even denatured alcohol. You want to put that on a paper towel and you want to thoroughly make sure there's no grease or gum residue. I've already done that, so I have these dry paper towels on hand because when I go to apply the wrap, I'm going to rub the wrap down, make sure it's good adhesion using a dry paper towel instead of my fingers. First things first, we're going to get a wrap here. Of course, the uh, idea is to try to not touch the bottom of the wrap at all, if it possible, and try not to muck up the corners when you pull it off. You want to remove the knocks before you do this. You can do it with a knock on it, but it's a heck of a lot easier if you do it without it. And then line up the edge and line up the end. Push in the center. Everything looks good. I'm just going to start rolling slowly. Still looks good. And this is why it's important for it to have give. Let's roll through. And there we go. Now I'm going to take that dry paper towel and I'm going to make sure I have good adhesion and also get any oils that I might have put on it with my fingers. All right, so now we have four wrap shafts. Now we can reinsert the knocks. All right, so now we're ready to fletch some arrows. Notice that with the knock indexer and the way the knock is set up, that crest on that logo is facing straight up, so this is going to be my off fletcher. Everybody likes to get all up in arms about degrees of offset and helical and all those sorts of things. They don't have like two degrees, three degrees, or anything labeled here either on the clamps or on the dials and so you don't really know exactly what a two or three degree fletch is. So what you have to do is you kind of have to eyeball what you like and the only way to do that is to dry fit something. So I have a blazer in here and I have a mark with Sharpie. You can see it there on the clamp. And that is a set distance that I like to use from which would be the back of the arrow, the back of the shaft, to the back of the fletching. And that gives my face plenty of clearance and everything else plenty of clearance when I have it knocked onto the string and I draw it. What I'm doing right now is I'm looking down the length of the base of the vein and I'm seeing if there's any parts that lift up. With a blazer vein it's really hard to have a part that lifts up unless, you're, unless your clamp is really offset. So after looking it over I like what I see here. I can take this clamp off, blazer's still in there and I want to make sure that it's okay with my mark still, make sure this hasn't moved, that's all squared away and now I can apply a bead of glue. Now I'm a big fan of boning fletch tight and fletch tight platinum. I have never had a problem with it. Now what I'm doing is I'm just applying a bead of glue, ensuring I don't have any major air pockets. Then I'm going to set it into the clamp. I'm going to slowly push down with even pressure. That glue is pretty good. I can see I have a little bit squirting out. That's okay. That's why I have Q-tips. Take a Q-tip. I'm going to run it from the back of the clamp up to the front. One thing you definitely, when you go to fletch arrows, is you do not want to rush it and you want to use a glue that has a long cure time. I never have fletchings rip off using this method of using a vinyl wrap of some sort and fletch type platinum, letting it cure for at least 48 hours. I never have a problem down the road. And here is an example of why do I go to such great lengths to make sure I have good fletch adhesion. This is from an arrow that I shot a doe with two years ago, uh, back in 2015. She snapped the arrow off. There's nicks and marks all over the wrap. She really gave it the rundown. Not a single fletch is torn off. I mean, if this arrow had stayed intact, this arrow would have been perfectly fine to shoot again and again and again. But it's clearly a method that works. I'm gonna stick to it. I'm gonna keep working with it. Yeah, it takes a little bit more time, but I'd rather have an arrow that took a little bit longer time that's 10 times more durable than an arrow that went a lot faster. All right, so now the vein has been sitting here for several minutes. I'm going to open the clamp, remove it, arrow looks good, fletching looks fine. I'm ready to get a, another blazer on there. 
it's important to note that I do a dry fit with every single vein on every single arrow I ever do, whether it's for me or for a customer. Every single time I do a dry run. Pop the cap off my glue, start at the back, work to the front. You don't need to go hog wild with this stuff. A little dab will do you. If you get a little bit of excess coming out, you're in the right spot. I do a little bit of excess, again, Q-tip, back of the clamp to the front of the clamp, and it's a waiting game. Okay, so I just unclamped the second vein. I was turning the indexer to get ready for the third, and I noticed that the second vein lays over the seam of the wrap. This is something that I've thought about before. Is that gonna you know, have an adverse effect on that Fletcher? The front, oh, I'd say probably, ah, maybe a millimeter, millimeter and a half of this, of that Fletch is over the seam of the wrap, and clearly it made it through that dough and then some, and it's still adhered just fine. So if it bugs you, you wanna orient your wrap and your knock and your indexer, uh, to ensure that you don't lay over the wrap seam, but for me, I've never had a problem with it. The next step is to tip and tail and put a little dab over the front end. Okay, now, I probably put more than the normal person. Like, if you went to a pro shop, they'd probably put a little dab on the back end, but I don't really care if it doesn't look super clean because I'm not interested in super clean. I'm interested in super durable. So I'm pretty excited with that. I still have three more arrows to do. One last tip and then I'll let you go because both kids just woke up from their nap. Spin test them to see which one's the straightest and then weigh them, okay, if you have that opportunity. I like to shoot the straightest and heaviest arrow first out of my quiver, meaning when I'm in a hunting situation, I want the heaviest arrow and that is the number one arrow that I sight in with. I mark them with Roman numerals right here on the bottom of the rack. So that way if I ever take these to a 3D shoot or if I'm in the hunting in the field and I, you know, some of them fall out of my quiver or whatever, I know exactly which arrow I want to shoot first. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions about how I further install fletchings or how I do anything else with arrows, bows, or form, or hunting in general, feel free to hit me over on my Facebook page or you can always leave a comment here on YouTube. I hope you're able to get outside and enjoy God's beautiful creation. Enjoy the sport of archery and archery hunting if you so choose. And we'll get to see you next time.